There are a few wearables beyond the Apple Watch that have taken the market quite like the Xiaomi Mi Band series. It's a mixture of price, battery, form and function, all combining to ensure that the Mi Band 7 remains Xiaomi's best budget product for yet another year. But this is our full review of the latest Mi Band series device. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. The clue is in the name of the Xiaomi Mi Band 7. It's predominantly a silicone band with a small screen that can be detached and fixed to various straps, clips, and even a keychain from certain retailers. When most of our everyday tech has ballooned and increased in size over the past few years, this is really refreshing, at least in its simplicity. Although that lack of fanfare with the design is commendable, it's actually really hard to differentiate between the Mi Band 7 and its predecessors. Kudos to Xiaomi for not making changes for the sake of it though, as this does mean that many existing accessories such as replacement straps should work just fine with this new version. Think of the Xiaomi Mi Band 7 like an old pair of slippers. It's familiar in all of the right ways, and that's really a good thing given that it's not trying to upset proceedings with fancy new hardware or major new functionality just for the sake of it and increasing the size as a result. Sadly though, there are no new watch face colours. You'll need to switch out that silicon band to inject a bit of extra flair here. But that said, it's very easy and inexpensive to do so. Given that the Mi Band 7 though is simply a strap with a two inch screen attached, I think it despite my complaints, actually works best in that standard stealthy black colour. Factoring that the Mi Band line has started around that $40 now up to that $70 mark, and it's actually a forgivable design choice. Without NFC connectivity for wireless payments though on global variants of this wearable, this has helped keep pricing low whilst making those incremental improvements year over year. For me though, the fact that we've seen fitness bands develop from that early Fitbit era strap with no display to full colour AMOLEDs shows just how far this style of wearable has evolved in what is relatively a short space of time. After introducing the colour to the screen with the Xiaomi Mi Band 4 on its display, the footprint has steadily increased millimetre by millimetre every year since. The 1.62 inch AMOLED display here is at 326 ppi, which I think is really incredible given its small stature. It's a deceptively good display that is a lot smoother as well than I anticipated. I will say I'm sore about the removal of that capacitive home button, but the gesture navigation and animations are relatively fluid given that this is just a really a few steps up from a scientific calculator in terms of power. Being able to do things like skip tracks and read notifications feels a little bit more analog than you would be on a traditional smartwatch display or a smartphone display, something that is great even despite being what you would be essentially overloaded with info on such a small screen. This is editing Damien dropping in right now to say that the always on display feature has come with an update over the last couple of days while editing this video. The update has dropped. As you can see, I've got the always on display working there. The feature itself is a lot better than I actually anticipated it would be. I thought it'd be a lot more basic, but the always on display feature is an excellent addition to what is possibly the best wearable out there right now. Xiaomi though has added a number of new watch faces to take advantage of this new larger display and the addition of super wallpapers from MIUI are an interesting but not necessarily a great addition all things considered. I found that sometimes the animations would jump when activating the screen. While it's nice in principle, I simply stuck with the default watch face as I think it provided all of the information I wanted right at a glance. Through the Zep Life app, formerly MiFit, you can also choose from a motley selection of designs that range from mechanical to abstract art and there's a lot of choice for you there to sift through and pick to suit your own style. I found the 500 nit maximum brightness to be just enough for legibility in, in a variety of environments including sunny conditions, but the domed glossy display I think hinders the Mi Band 7's legibility a little bit. I will say though on top of that it is small enough that you can just cover it with your hand, kind of making a shadow that you can so you can make everything out on the screen without too much of an issue so it's not too much of a complaint all things considered. At just 13.5 grams and with that compact size, I think when you're wearing this, you'll barely notice that there's something attached to your wrist on a day-to-day -day basis. I found that the Mi Band 7 is supremely comfortable thanks to the shape and size, but the band fastens in a way that makes it nice and secure on your wrist too. And on top of that, because the display is flat and elongated, nothing really protrudes out to inhibit your 
wrist movement. Heck, you could probably actually strap this to your ankle for a run, and I don't think it would be a bad experience, all things said. Everything is also waterproof to 5 ATM, which means that wearing the Mi Band 7 when in the shower or even in the pool is not really a concern. I would though recommend removing and drying the strap as it can, you can get some minor irritation because of that rubberized band when it does start to rub with water underneath. In terms of fitness and health tracking, there is no onboard GPS here, which means that you'll still need to carry your phone with you for mapped runs and walks. I don't personally have a huge problem with this as those serious about fitness are likely going to prefer a dedicated tracker anyway. Xiaomi though has slapped in 120 workout tracking options. Yes, 120. And that's a fourfold increase over the 30 modes offered on the Mi Band 6. That's not all though, as there are some recovery mode tracking data options alongside training load data points on top of that. I can't speak too highly for the accuracy of all of those modes as I'm mainly doing a lot of walking at the moment, but you do have plenty of options that dwarf a lot of full fat smartwatches out there. The auto workout tracking, I have this enabled and I find that it can be a little slow to kick in, which is something you might want to bear in mind if you are relying on this. That said, being able to track things even from a rudimentary standpoint is always going to be more useful than simply guessing the metrics for yourself. And that's all on top of pretty accurate step count data too. Using the ZepLife app, which as I mentioned is formerly known as MeFit, you can sync all of your fitness and health data to Google Fit too. This data gets tagged within the Fit app, making it even easier to see when you've actually worn your band or another wearable connected to your Google account. To help ensure though that you get the best battery life on this device, I would suggest turning the continuous heart rate monitoring right down to 30 minutes as it is set to every minute out of the box. I left as well the constant blood oxygen or SpO2 tracking on and after receiving the Mi Band just a few weeks ago, I've only charged it once fully to 100% and in the six days since I started wearing this, I've had not even had to consider seeking out the charger, which is a real bonus. Xiaomi does claim that you can get up to 15 days of lifespan and I think with some tweaks it might be possible, but I think you'll lose out on some of the nice new features that this slim wearable has to offer. For sleep tracking, I think this is where this kind of device will always be a large, bulky, power hungry smartwatch too. That said, I'm not one for wearing watches in bed, but I did find that it was comfortable on the odd occasion that I did try during my six day period wearing this. So overall, looking at the Mi Band 7, I think the lack of NFC support outside of China is one of the few continual sore points for what is a tried and tested product that gets marginally better with each passing year. I think if you want a daily companion for basic fitness tracking with little to no bulk, there is really nothing better out there. However, if you do have an older Mi Band, such as the Mi Band 5 or the Mi Band 6, then there likely isn't enough for you to consider picking up this new model. Personally, I think that the Mi Band 7 is the perfect alternative though to a fully fledged smartwatch, such as the Galaxy Watch 4, which I do often wear daily. If you just want basic health and workout tracking, a slim form factor and excellent battery life, then this is still the undisputed king of the fitness bands. I want to know though if you or what you think of the Mi Band 7 down in the comment sections below. Have you managed to pick one up since it has only recently gone on sale? It will be interesting to hear all of your thoughts. But until next time, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.